Hey guys, uh, so this is my newest car. It is a 2015 Dodge Challenger RT. It's the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 with the 8-speed automatic. The 8-speed automatic is an amazing transmission, um, but uh, this, all, this also has a push-button start, so it's, it's actually um, keyless entry. Like, uh, you know, of course there's a T-fob, but it's you don't, you don't even have to have the T-fob out. You can if you want, but um, it's basically... You just have to touch the handle, which I'll show you in a little bit when I do like a walk around. Um, excuse the messy garage. It's been wintertime. And also when I bought this house, uh, the previous owner passed away. He, it was like, a you know, his fishing camp type of deal. I mean, it's a house, but he was using it as like he had three houses or something like that. So he was using it as a fishing camp because we're so close to the lake. Um, so I bought it. So some of the stuff that's in the garage is his. I have to get rid of it. Um, so I just haven't had the... Uh, the right way to dispose of it because one of the garage doors doesn't work. Um, the one that's in front of me is the only one that actually works, but there's no motor on it, which I bought one. And that's a whole other story with uh, Home Depot. Nothing against Home Depot, but when I went to get it installed, I had an appointment and they just didn't know what was going on. And found, later, come to find out, the uh, the company that they went to have do it, because they, they uh, outsource it, um, they... <laughs> The person like quit or something so they didn't have anybody to send out so they just gave me a refund after like a month of me asking like what's going on nobody knew so anyway um so this is i am going to start this since i have the garage door open um this is exactly also why all my cars are parked off to the side like that so i have a clear shot if i want to drive this i don't drive this much it's uh i've had it for close to three years i bought it with thirty-seven thousand miles it only has like 46 on it now so, um, but interior quality after five years, um, it's pretty dark in here because it's inside my garage. Uh, but actually my screen's lighter than it is in, in my car. Uh, interior quality, there's nothing wrong with this car pretty much at all. Um, these cars basically Dodge. So Fiat bought out Dodge and Chrysler and all that. Um, but the quality overall actually has gotten a little bit, like, I would say a little bit better. Um, they started using this transmission, which is the biggest update because it's not made by Chrysler. It's actually made by a company named ZF, which is over in Germany, I believe. And they do transmissions for um, BMW, Audi, Rolls-Royce, a bunch of other places, or, you know, other brands. Um, excuse me. I'm pretty sure that the ZF transmissions are also the seven speed and the nine speed, I think that Chrysler uses. And I think that the Jeeps and like the Jeep uh, Renegade, I think has a nine speed. I'm not positive. This is an eight speed. It is awesome. It has, um, manual select shift also. So it's like a slap shift kind of, um, I don't have the paddles. The higher up models have the paddles. I don't have them. Um, this is a basic, 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 basic RT. So it's basically, uh, there are no options on this that I'm aware of other than um, everything that comes with getting the 5.7 V8. Um, I have the smallest screen possible, which I am completely fine with because I had this in my 14 RAM that I talked about earlier. Um, it's slightly different. This one's color. The black, the, the RAM was like gr all gray, like black and white and grays. This one shows like the CD art and stuff. This one has more options in it for the, the actual car. And then... Uh, the only th only thing I have a problem with with the interior quality is I don't know where it's coming from exactly. I think it is so this little coat hanger thing right here. I think it's the little um that little rectangle right here. Uh, sorry, not rectangle. This guy right here, that part. See how it moves? I think that's I think it rattles when I drive because it doesn't do it all the time, but it rattles. So I gotta find some way of doing it. It's not the big piece because I already shoved something in there and it doesn't it doesn't move anymore. And it, and it still rattles here and there. So I think it's this actual, like this guy right here. that This middle piece right here that I'm pushing in. I think that's the piece that's rattling. I could be wrong. It sounds like it's right behind me. Um, could also be that, but it, it doesn't sound like it's above me. I I'm pretty sure it's that. So other than that, though, um, there's nothing else that would be there to rattle. So it's just kind of a weird vibration. Um, nothing huge, just enough to be annoying, I guess. But I don't know if the person that had this before me, um, you know, hooked a lot of clothes on there or something or did something. I don't know. Who, who knows? The other side doesn't do it. It's fine. Um, the seats are cloth. Uh, they're actually pretty comfortable. Like, these are pretty comfortable cars, honestly. I'm six foot five, like I said in my, my Ram video and my, also my Monte Carlo video. And 
don't know how well you can see it, but I can pretty much straighten my legs out. Let me try turning on the flash. There you go. I can straighten my legs out like all the way. And I have my seats back all the way. Um, if you are tall, I'm going to leave this on actually. I have stuff in the back. I always have stuff in the back. Um, if you're tall, you cannot fit anything like back here. I mean, look at this. I can't even fit my, I can't even fit my hand back there. And that's the back seat. So I have my seats, you know, leaned a little bit. They're not terribly leaned, but there's no room. I mean, I literally can't put my hand back there. So if you're shorter than six foot five, say, you know, you don't have to have the seat all the way back, then you probably won't have a problem putting kids back there. Um, all this red trim I did myself. Um, it's just this stuff that you can buy online. I did these red uh, covers on here. These, these just kind of, they're metal, but they slide over top and they just grip onto it. So they're just, they're basically part of the knob now. Um, you can just pull them off too, but they're, they're nice, a nice uh, addition. You can get like three different colors on Amazon and stuff. Um, but power windows, power locks, power mirrors, just like any other, you know, newer car. Um, and then, like I said, push button start. This, these have like an, I'm going to start it here, actually. Uh, the nice thing, you just have it in your pocket and you can just, you just push the brake pedal and hit the start button. There we go. So it's loud because I have a um, resonator delete. So it's basically the resonator is gone. That is not an accurate number because uh, I reset it. I forget what I was doing, but I reset it. So it's lower than normal. Normal driving, like this thing. So uh, the, if you get the automatic version of this, it's like three horsepower less and 10 pound feet of torque less. But with the eight speed, it is geared so aggressively. Like these are actually quicker than the manual that has more power and torque. Um, but the, this shifts really quick. Um, literally, uh, you have sport mode right here. And when you press it, you get this green flag light up there. And then I'll turn it off real quick so it'll shut off. Um, when you're in normal mode, uh, this will shift. Like, sorry, the transmission will shift in, I think it's 200 and, or no, sorry, it's 400 milliseconds. So four tenths of a second um, is what it shifts in. And then when you put it in sport mode, it cuts that almost in half. It's actually 240 milliseconds. To put that into perspective, the average person, uh, sorry, the average time it takes a person to blink is like 1.2 seconds. So, or sorry, uh, 0.12 seconds. It's, it's a little bit more than one tenth. So it literally takes about twice as long as it takes for a person to blink for this to shift in sport mode. You can also get them tuned. And from what I'm told, when you tune them, uh, which 15 and up, you have to have a, a whole PCM swapped out with an unlocked one. But, um, once you tune them, I, I believe that they can put that down to um, to 0.14 seconds. So it's 140 milliseconds or a little over one tenth. Uh, so there's the radio. Uh, yes, I have Lincoln Park. There is no CD player from 2015 up. There is no CD player. All you have is the, you can have Bluetooth and stuff. And there is this little guy in here. I'm gonna turn this on again. You have that little panel right there, SD card. USB and auxiliary. I have an SD card in there full of, I forgot how big it is, but there's quite a bit of sounds in there. And then, um, other than that, there is a power port right there. Um, there is an auxiliary, no, sorry. I, I don't use them very often, so I've got to remember. Uh, oh, right there. DC auxiliary port right there. Um, other than that, I'm pretty sure there's nothing else in here. Uh, they have this cool little Dodge Brothers, uh, you call it uh, Easter egg, and then I'm gonna turn this off again. Um, all of the Chrysler vehicles have something. Um, 2015 and up Challenger have a Challenger silhouette. Hard to see, but it's focusing on my cars. I will have to do it from the outside. Um, so I'm gonna get out real quick. I'm gonna shut this off actually, and then I'm gonna open up the door. One thing I hate about these things is when you open up the door. Um, the older style cars that didn't have a piece of metal up here, it was just, it's just glass. When you shut the door, it just goes up against the weather stripping. It just goes up against it. These ones actually go in and then, they, then the window goes up into it. So when you open up the door, it actually drops down. So I'll, sh I mean, I'll try to show you, but see it, it just automatically just goes up into it. Um, so, uh, see the Dodge Challenger thing. There's the car right God, it's so hard to see. It's hard to see, but it's like right here. There we go. There's a silhouette of it. 
Um, all the challengers have that from 2015 up especially. Um, when I got this thing, like I said, it's fused the mess of my garage. Uh, when I got that thing, it had this spoiler on it, which is upside down right now. It was just this little flat spoiler. Um, it's pretty flat. It was very, very non-aggressive. And like I said, that's the basic one. So I bought one off of eBay that was a replica of the better ones. Uh, and then I'll, I'll just do a walk around part of this video too. Um, this is my own custom design stripes. Um, they are based off of the, the, uh, the shaker package that comes with the shaker hood. And I did my own stripe um, design, like I said. And so it goes, it actually starts, well, it starts in the front, of course, but have it on the back, it goes all the way down. So um, it goes up the top, it goes on the roof. And then the front turns into the Punisher skull. And then it comes down the whole front. So um, that's the hood. This is also tweaked from the, the original a little bit just to fit better. Um, like this has been rounded off a little bit more. That's been rounded off a little bit more. The eyes have been rounded off a little bit more. Same with the nose just to make it, um, when you get sharp edges on a, on a decal, it makes more area for it to try to pop up. Um, like for, you know, for stuff to catch on it when you're going over it, like washing it and stuff. So they, they round them off. Um, I actually had from here, I had basically the hood and this section right here done first. And then after that, I was like, no, I want something more. I want stripes and stuff. So I couldn't figure out what I wanted. So I finally decided I wanted that down the front. So this was the next spring I had from here down put on. It's also down there. Um, and then these are functional air intakes. That's how they come. Uh, they're not air intakes for, sorry, they're not air intakes. They are functional scoops, but they're not air intakes. They actually, um, they push air into the engine compartment and it goes like straight down through. Um, so actually this one, this one goes like right over top of the, uh, the, uh, coolant reservoir, I believe. So it helps keep that a little bit cooler, I guess. But, um, other than that, let's see, uh, like I said, the stripes are my own design. They go, um, so here's the handle. I don't have the keys in my hand. I'm holding my, I'm holding my phone with my hand. All you do is you touch it and it unlocks. You just touch it again, unlocks. And this is the lock button right here. And you just press it and it locks. So there's the locks, you just touch the handle and they come up and you just press the top. And that's the alarm, which I don't know why that's the alarm, but it did. So maybe just as I did it, so short of time. Um, so um, other than that, wheels are 20 inch. Uh, the tires on this are getting well, the front ones, I, I rotated them, so the front ones are a little bit low on tread. The rear ones are, like, brand new now. I painted my gas door. I had the original one right here. There's the original. I bought another one off of somebody that bought one of these off of Amazon, and I just was like, heck with it, I'll paint it. So I painted it. It's an acrylic paint. It's actually been it's actually been pretty good. I stuck this on there. I have, I don't know where I put them. Oh, there they are. There's more of them right there. Um, so this one does not have the backup camera, which kind of would be nice because the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the view out of the car is a little bit like you have, you have quite a bit of blind spots. Um, but it is a pretty big car. It's still a decent, like it's still a pretty big car. Um, so I'm going to stand back a little bit so you can see a little bit more of the size. It's still a full size to medium sized car. Um, but other than that, sorry, I'm stepping over stuff. Um, uh, yes, I have, I mean, I have leaves and crap in my room. I mean, like I said, I have a bunch of crap. <laughs> so that's my, that's my old dresser. That's the only reason I still have it because I had that since I was like two years old. My mom painted it, so it's kind of like sentimental to me. Um, anyway, um, so that's, that's the uh, Challenger. It's definitely a fun car to drive. Um, very fun, actually. And then the mirrors on it are nice. I mean, there are nice big windows to it. I think I think partially I have the uh, kind of a bad viewing angle out of cars because I'm so tall. I have the seat farther back than they're really supposed to be. So, you know, a normal person might be able to see pretty well out of here, but I have to see a little bit out of this little window too. You know, because my head is like back there. So, and there's like this section right here you can't see through. So it's a little bit rough for me, a little bit rougher. Um, this one does not have the blind spot monitors. Like I said, it's, this is a very basic, um, it is the Hemi, 5.7 Hemi. Um, I will pop the hood real quick. I didn't think about that. I'll do that. 
Um, and right there. And then I will pop this open so you guys can see what it's like. And since I don't drive this car that often, there we go, there's a little lever. There we go. Uh, it's a little bit dirty because of where I am. Um, so there's the scoop right there. That's where it goes into. And it's basically like right in here that it comes down on. It's like somewhere in there. Uh, air intake is factory. Everything's factory. The only thing I have done on this car, um, I'm just going to show you here. There's nothing done. Um, this thing holds in heat really badly, which I hate. So I'm going to try to probably do like a center thing or a cutout. I did not realize I had that on there. <laughs> I didn't realize that was a, that's like a resonator. So your air intake's not very loud. I might try to take that off eventually. And then, um, let's see. I did resonator delete. So there is no resonators back there. If I can even, I can't, sorry, I cannot see that. Uh, there it is. There's a pipe right there. Boom, right there. So it just goes to the center and goes up. There's usually a big, big resonator right here, uh, which is, where did I put them? <laughs> oh, they're over, like I said, a lot of this stuff is not mine, but those are my resonators right there. That's the ones that came off the, the Challenger. Um, <laughs> that is mine. That's the muffler off the RAM, the, the 14 RAM I had. I did a muffler delete on that. Sounded way better than this thing does, honestly. Um, but I'm probably going to do exhaust cutouts on this. I am not a huge guy in doing like superchargers. Actually, I'm not a, really a person at all to do that type of stuff. I like my cars to be like reliable. I don't care if they're not the like, you know they're not the fastest thing. This is not the fastest car, um, but it's still fun. Um, other than that, though, like it's um, I don't know. It's it's a nice. It's they're somewhat cheap. They're not you know super expensive if you get the lower models. Um, the RT is the V is the smaller V8, so you still have the V8 rumble to it. It's still pretty quick. Um, zero to 60 is neighborhood of, I mean, this thing, this thing's like five. I've seen people get as low as like 4.6. Um, but same thing. Um, if you get the super track pack, I believe the rear end axle, I mean, sorry, the rear axle is like the ratio is different. So it's a little bit quicker. I think, um, I could be wrong, but, um, and I know the, uh, the manual transmission, the axle gearing is different too. It's like a higher, like higher number, which is like a technically a lower gear. Um, but overall it's 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 a nice reliable car it's fun to drive it's nice like the interior is really nice on it um you know it doesn't have a whole lot like, especially this one it doesn't have a whole lot of like extras which i'm okay with um i like to have it where if i go from this car to my monte carlo out there or from this one to my truck or from this one to my van I'm not really missing anything. The only thing I'd be missing, honestly, is the touchscreen. I'm pretty sure. I can't find anything else. And, of course, the V8, the, you know, it's fast. But um, other than that, though, there's really nothing I would miss, you know. Um, this one has the radio on the uh, steering wheel. So does the Monte Carlo. The van, I think, might. I'm not sure. I haven't driven it that much. I just bought it, like, two weeks before the coronavirus thing. Um, the Ram does not have it on there. But, um it's still a nice, this is a nice car. It's got, um, the, the gas mileage on it. That's what I was getting at. The gas mileage on it. This thing gets like, if you're going 65, this will get like 30 miles per gallon highway. Um, what it does is it shuts off. I'm going to get back in here. I'm not going to show you anything with this, but, um, when you're driving, uh, up in here, it'll have a, especially if you have it on the, um, the fuel economy setting, because this has a lot of settings in it. Um, it'll tell you your, your average miles per gallon, I'll a little gauge, plus it'll tell you your, your instant. Um, so this thing, when you're going 65 on the highway, um, it does get less when you're going 70, but if you're going 65, this thing gets like 29 miles per gallon. It actually got, I don't, I mean, a lot of people will say that it, it shouldn't change it, but when I changed the spoiler, it went from like 30 to 29 um, there's a little bit more downforce, has a little bit more drag. It should be a little bit less. So the same thing happened on my Monte Carlo. Um, I had a, I mean, it's a red one. Um, I had a, an 03 SS, which was the 3.8 liter V6. Um, I got like 30 miles per gallon on the highway. That is a 3.9 liter V6 and it's supposed to be technically a little bit more efficient, but that one gets like 28 because I'm pretty sure it's because the spoiler is more of a duck bill on that, on this one and the 03 was flat it was they call it the surfboard one or uh yeah surfboard spoiler it's just flat across the top almost completely flat 
this one has that one has a duck bill so it's like the same type of deal as this one so i think it actually did slow it down a little bit i mean i'm um, sorry works in the gas mileage a little bit when you're going 70 this thing gets like 28 27 um and here's the thing is when you're in sport mode so a lot of people don't know about this this is for the automatics. The manuals do not have this. Um, it's called MDS. It's a uh, multi-displacement system. Um, and what it means is when you're cruising, especially in, in sport mode, sorry, I'm not even pointing at it, sport mode, or you have the automatic transmission and manual mode, which you have to move it over for manual, and it goes backwards for upshift and forward for downshift. Um, but that puts it in eight cylinders all the time. Like if, if you put it over here in the manual mode, it is eight cylinders. You put it on sport mode, it's eight cylinders. Um, so when you're not in sport or um, manual mode, this thing drops from eight cylinders down to four to save gas um, under light load. So when you're just cruise control on the highway, level ground, downhill, slight, slight, even slight uphills, it stays in four cylinders. Um, but you know, once you start getting a little bit steeper hill, it'll kick in all eight. Um, you can also drive on the highway in sport mode. You can drive on the highway in manual mode. But to get the best gas mileage, you want to do it in the automatic without the sport mode and stuff on. Um, but other than that, um, like I said, that, that one, when I turned it on, it said 17.7 miles per gallon. That was in sport mode. And uh, in sport mode, it keeps the revs, um, sorry, the RPMs a little bit higher. Like when, when you drive, it'll keep it in the gear longer before it upshifts and then it'll keep that one that gear in longer before it upshifts um in automatic mode it skips a gear here and there it also shifts a lot earlier so you're not wasting as much gas um so but uh let's see can't really think of anything else the glove box in here is has a nice little drop zone on its own it's not too small there's little compartments up top it's kind of nice um just nice and easy lights up here um sunglasses a little thingy up here um sun visors are a little lit, you know lit mirrors and stuff i'm pretty sure this one has it too which don't know why you want that on the driver's side because like the older vehicles didn't have this on this side they always had it on the passenger side only um and then other than that i don't drive this in cold weather uh this is like my summertime like weekend only like sunny days and stuff. Even I mean, today I would take it out. It's nice out. It's not. It's cloudy, but it's not raining or nothing. Um, I wouldn't have a problem driving it in rain, except for I already lost a sports slash muscle car. I had a, a '96 uh, Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, and I had it for five and a half months, and I hydroplaned it and wrecked it when I was like 19. Had it for like I said, five and a half months. And that was my favorite car. Like, I love this car, don't get me wrong, but Trans Ams have always been my favorite since I was little. And I had a, a V6 Firebird when I was 17 and a, and a V8 Trans Am when I was 19. And, uh, I, I mean, I love this car. I will keep this car as long as I can. Um, I don't have any interest in upgrading to the Stat Pack or the Hellcat or anything like that. Um, I, you know, I just, I don't, I don't know, like, it's your own opinion to do it or what or not, but I don't, I can't justify, I already bought this thing. Like I'm, you know, I'm, of course I'm paying on it, but I can't, I can't justify redoing my payments and making them more expensive to get the same car. That's a little bit quicker, you know, and the Hellcat's way quicker, but the stat pack is quicker. It's just not insanely quicker. So it's like, why would I go from, I bought this thing for 24 grand. Um, it's like a $35,000 car or $33,000 car new. Um, I bought it when it was two years old and it was 20, 24 grand. So nothing huge. My, my 14 Ram that I had before this was, uh, 35 grand. I bought that new and I regretted it actually. Um, well, kind of, it was like, it was, a, the situation was different. Um, I was in Colorado used, used trucks in Colorado are insanely expensive or at least were, um, and so it was made sense to go with a newer one for double the price of a 200,000 mile truck. Uh, like literally they wanted $16,000 for a 160,000 mile truck for $16,000. And if that's not taken care of very well, that could die tomorrow. So I was like, nope, I'm going to get new, get a warranty, all that stuff. Um, but uh, other than that, though, I can't, um, I can't think of anything else. Like I said, the, like, uh, you know, the mirrors, they're small, but they're still, you can see pretty nicely out of them. That's pretty much my view. 
Um, same thing on this side. It's a nice view. Uh, the interior, like the placement's nice. Uh, there's nothing. I mean, this is pretty like short. It's not too short though. Like it's no. Oh, here's here is one problem I have with this car is because this sticks like the top sticks out so far. When you come up to like a red light, you have to like lean forward to look up. You can't just like be sitting here and look up. You can't see it. So you have to lean forward and look up. So it's a little bit awkward that way. Otherwise, you're like 15 feet back from the line. Maybe even more. Maybe 20, 25. So it's a little bit awkward. Um, I don't have to do that in any, any other vehicle. This is the way that this is. Um, but other than that, I uh, can't think of anything else. So there's traction control here. Like I said, I don't have some of the stuff. So like there's extra stuff. And the higher, higher up models have more buttons and stuff. I don't have that. Um, you can do you can do the heater through the screen or through down here. There are arrows. There's red and blue, hot and cold. It's like, you know, climate control, you can have, there's hot and cold for the other side, there's AC, there's the recirculate, and then front defrost, rear defrost. Like I said, I don't use this in the cold, so I don't really use them. Rear defrost sometimes, if it's like, you know, the dew and everything that's on the rear window, I'll use it uh, here and there. But uh, there's also the auto, I mean, you have all the heating, pretty much all the heating controls here. You can put it in automatic, just keep it at the same temperature. Um, but most of that is also, actually, I'm pretty sure all of it. Is in the touch screen it's just a touch screen it's harder to, harder to maneuver when you're moving this is easy you just hit up you know just move it up until you see the thing go up here on here so it's like you know 68 69 70 whatever um this one you actually have to like point like push it and like drag i mean it is a touch screen so you have to actually touch it and drag it's hard when you hit a bump and stuff it's just hard to get it like exactly where you want um you can sync them together on that screen you can change like where the air comes out which actually you cannot do on this so you have to do it in the screen that's one thing you have to do in there. So I'm pretty sure every control is in here, and then some of the some of the ones that you would use like up and down, like the, like the ones that you use more often are down here. Um, and then radio is here. The volume you can turn the volume up on there, I believe too. Same thing with station. I know you can do that station. Uh, but other than that, um, it's nice. You have your cruise control and stuff here. You have the infotainment center sorry it's not infotainment but it's like you know the the thing in here for the uh your gas mileage and all that stuff that's how you select it is that and then that is for phone calling and stuff which i don't use and then i don't have anything here because it's not a higher up model um the radio controls it's uh they're so weird they're back here right there that's volume up volume down and i cannot remember what that one does honestly i don't use it the other side has the same deal, and it is radio station up, radio station down. I don't even know if you can see it, but it's, it's the same button. It says radio station up is over here, radio station down, and there's also a center button on that too, uh, which I think is uh, seek or something like that. Might even be stip. Oh, that's what that one is. It is or no up and down and here, up and down here is also stipping on the the songs uh, on your seat, like not CD, but you know the SD card or auxiliary, whatever. But um, Maybe that's mode change. I can't, like I said, I don't use it that often, so um, that might change the uh, the FM, you know, AM, FM, and auxiliary, all that stuff. But like I said, I can't remember what this one does. Um, there's handles up here, handle on that side. The interior trim and stuff, like there's no leather on this. But there's, it's just kind of, it's a softer, somewhat soft plastic. This is leather down, down here, or at least looks like it. Nice, you know, semi-nice stitching. It's nice and soft. They have soft, they actually have soft uh, materials in here. You can actually see, I mean, I'm pushing that down pretty far. And I'm not even putting a whole lot of effort into it. Um, stitching on here, same deal. It moves, you know, one finger, It's you can see it moving. Uh, like I said, there, there's really nothing. Uh, the nice thing, these glow when you have the lights on. There's an ambient glow that's like underneath the dash um, that is kind of, I think you can turn it on all the time. And uh, it's like a, off white i believe like almost like a bluish white it's kind of nice you know it's kind of cool to see like, you know just extra lighting in there like all these people used to have like the neons and stuff when you're younger i was guilty it's kind of like one of those you know that type of effect but not as bright um other than that though i can't think of anything else uh maybe i'll start this again and i will show you all the uh it says challenger when you first started up which is cool 46,018 miles. So there's my fuel economy, 17.2, which is like I said is wrong. Your range is up here, your, my current MPG, it's also this that needle right there. 
is your average, and then this whole circle right here will be your current. It goes up to 30. You can't see it, but there's a 0 to 30 in there. There, you, there it is. Um, so as you're driving, you'll see like this green line like going up and down. And then you, you select these buttons down here, and that can switch it from performance. You can do like a 0 to 60. Sorry, that's braking distance. There's 0 to 60 timer. As you can see, it doesn't show the last one because I haven't done it since I did it. Uh, this is from the previous owner, honestly, so that's five seconds flat. Uh, there's your tire pressures. I don't, don't I, I filled them up in the wintertime a little bit, and I filled them up all the same, so I don't know why the other two are higher. Uh, you can make your speedometer bigger. You can, so here's the screen setup. You can do this while you're in park, I believe, or I, you might have to have it in on, I'm not sure. Um, but you, you can actually move, like the, you can put the compass down in the corner, you can put the fuel gauge up there, you can move stuff around, which is kind of cool. You can set it up the way you want. Um, and then messages, that's not messages for phone, but that's like, you know, if, you have, if you're out of windshield washer fluid or something like that, that shows up there. Audio tells you your song you're listening to and, and your, your type of, uh, well actually it doesn't tell me the song because it's, oh, that's in the options, you can, you can set it that way. So it says Lincoln Park there, and like I said, there's something, I can't remember. It's in the settings though. Um, that is trip odometer. That's since I bought it. <laughs> uh, and then fuel economy again. So, I don't remember. Let's see. Okay, so anyway. Um, Why aren't you working? There you go. Okay. My touch screen's a little bit odd. So, um, anyway. So, temperature's up here. 71. That's what it's set to. There's the mode. So, up here, you got climate. And this is, like I said, this is the process for the small screen. The bigger screens don't even have the buttons, it's just the screen. This one doesn't have any extra apps, it's basically just heat. There's max AC, you know, recirculate, front, rear, defrost, uh, the mode, sync, you can sync the temperatures together, so both sides are 71. Um, auto, so it just turns the AC on whenever it wants. You can turn the fan speed different, you can go up and down. Um, and then climate off, you just turn everything off. Um, this is what I meant like with the temperature. Um, it is, let me turn this off. That's why it's so hard to do while you're moving. <laughs> Cause it's a little bit like, it's pretty touchy. So um, even when you're sitting here, it's still a little bit weird. So I just think them together. Uh, SD card still shows my audio, still shows the time. Um, you go in here and then that's, that is your modes, defrost and all that stuff. Um, oops. And then there is compass, just a big compass. <laughs> and then there's more. There's your settings. There's clock, there's mirror dimmer. You can make your mirror actually dims automatically. Um, when you have like somebody behind you that has a bright, like bright headlights and stuff, it, it dims automatically. Um, screen off, there's settings. There's display, there's units, voice, clock and date. I am not even pointing out there. Uh, safety assistance, which is like the lighting. There's power steering, hill start assist. Light, sorry, lights are in here. Uh, headlight off. Okay, so here's one thing. Daytime running lights right here. This is the thing. If you have a Challenger and you don't and you don't know how to do this, if you're watching this, the orange or, or the uh, the amber lighting, like the rings on your headlights that are on the inside ones, this is how you turn them on. Um, if you have them on, you will have the orange rings. If you have them off, there won't be sorry amber rings. If you turn it off, you won't have them. It'll just be white. Um, in Canada. If you have a Canadian, I mean, they're all built in Canada, but if you have a Canadian made, like where it's uh, sold in Canada, and it has kilometers per hour instead of miles per hour, you will not have, you might not have this option. I don't know if you have the option or not, but you won't be able to turn it off. It's uh, illegal to have them off in Canada. So um, they don't even make them where you can turn them off if, if they're Canadian, like built for Canada. So um, there's back. And then there's daytime lights and wipers. You can turn the lights on when when the when the user wipers the lights turn on. Sorry, I'm trying to. I don't use these that often. Um, like I said, I don't, I don't drive this insanely much. I've only put uh, what nine thousand miles on it in three years. So you can have a big clock for no reason at all. And then outside temp is fifty. I don't know if you can select that. No, you cannot. So then over here is the phone. I don't have it hooked up, so there we go. You want a pair of phone? No. Media, there's media, there you go. And then there's radio. So I do not know why that is set that way. FM, 
there we go so see it's very basic stuff um this one doesn't have let me try to find something that has a there we go there's our album uh, album art the cover art um, tells me it's coming from SD card. That's the only thing I've ever used in this other than the radio So I don't know what else it would say like or where it says it for the other stuff uh, Here's source right there There's all the sources that can do in this one SD auxiliary USB and Bluetooth um, Info there's more info about it um, And then pause there's browse which you can go into like the files and stuff shuffle repeat audio um, Audio is where you do all the bass and all that stuff equalizer loudness and I have that on and stuff. So, um, so other than that, I leave that on all the time with that. Uh, so, like I said, if you have any questions or comments, um, or if you have any questions about this car, uh, I even though I love this car, I like I honestly I love this car, but uh, I will still uh, answer them honestly. I do know, like you know, these cars do have some issues. They're not they are not what people say. Um, you know. So basically, Dodge had a huge thing with transmissions being junk for a long time. These are awesome. They are not made by Chrysler. That's why they're not junk. My Ram over there has a Dodge made transmission and it's technically a junky transmission, but that one works fine. Um, but that's, that's the problematic transmissions that they've always had is what's in that. Uh, but also my Monte Carlo has a prob problematic transmission where they're known to be problematic. So a lot, of, actually the one in the van is actually slipping. It's the, pretty sure that's the same one that's in the Monte Carlo. That one slips here and there, but that one's been slipping since I got it. Um, shortly after I got it, I should say. Uh, but other than that, yeah, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing like spectacular in here, but there's nothing like everything looks good. It's not a fancy, fancy car, but it's, everything has a good shape to it. It's comfortable. Everything's easy reach, you know. There, uh, this is a telescoping and also, um, what do you call it? You can move the steering wheel up and down. I, I just, the name escaped me. Um, <laughs> either way, um, you, so you can adjust the steering wheel towards you, so it's telescoping and also um, you can lift it up and down. Um, I cannot remember that word. <laughs> what they call it? I know it. I just it's slipping my mind right now. So anyway. Um, the uh you can get this stuff you just wedge it in here this is the only mods i've really done is this and this and the resonator delete and stuff up here um i thought about doing more but i don't know i might do more like down in here or something i'm also thinking about a different color i thought about doing a brighter red this is like a darker red it, sho it shows up lighter on the uh the screen you can see it's a little bit darker than this I guess this is darker than that this is metal too though but still it's, this is lighter than that by a little like by a few shades uh, so, other than that, um, I'm gonna get out of here, I think. I'll, I'm gonna start another video and another vehicle. So, um, like I said, if you guys have any questions, um, or comments, leave a comment down below. Um, like I said, I will try to answer questions as honestly as I can. I will be completely honest about them. Um, uh, I do know of, like I said, I do know some issues of these cars. I have not had the issues, knock on wood. But, oh, there's the rattle. Okay, so it's farther back than I thought. It's actually back by the uh, rear window or something. So, good, because usually I hear it when I'm driving. And actually, I'm gonna use this to uh, diagnose it. How about that? And it stopped. So, oh well. Of course I say I was gonna use that to diagnose it and it stops. But anyway, uh, um, if you uh, want to like and subscribe this video, I would appreciate it, and um, I will try to keep these videos coming. Uh, this is April, do 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 do. I'm not even sure seventh. Um, so let's go again. I don't know, it sounds like it's somewhere. It's either that or it's down in like that panel there. That's what it sounds like. So. Something like that. Anyway, sorry. Uh, but if you have any comments, just please like and subscribe, like I said. And um, thank you for watching.